Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And this week we're at Mechaglis Raceway here in Quebec to take the Focus RS through its paces. The RS is a wolf in sheep's clothing because while it may look like a regular Focus at first blush, when you start looking at those little differences, this is a sport tuned hatchback that while it can do re everyday family stuff, you can throw a dog in the very back of it if you like, it's still a completely race bred car. We're going to put it around this ice course and see how it does. That's this week here on Family Wheels. So since this is a sport tuned version of the Focus, don't expect to spend regular Ford Focus prices either. This car pretty much only has one option in Canada and it starts at about $48,000. The only option that we've got on this car is this blue color which costs just under a thousand bucks. So at the end of the day we're just shy of 50 grand at this point here in this test vehicle that we're driving. Now south of the border you can get a more basic version of this car for a more basic price. But here in Canada it's basically a one stop shop shop and the equipment that you're getting in here is really good. I mean you're getting an excellent hot hatchback with amazing performance but you're also getting a Sony entertainment system, you're getting navigation, you're getting Ford Sync 3 infotainment system. This is a nice place to be and I love, I love these sport bucket seats. They really hold you through the corner but they're not so firm that you feel like you're being jostled to death. But for what this car gives you in seat comfort, it takes it away in this unforgiving sport suspension. It's like the shocks have been swapped out with lengths of two by four in here. I think it, my microphone might actually be taking a hit here this week and demonstrating just how rough this ride is. So my apologies if the audio is just a little questionable this week. But you know what? I don't care about the ride because this car is just so much fun. I just want to bury my foot all day long. Just take a listen to this engine note. interesting here about the Focus RS is that Ford has decided to only offer it up with a six-speed manual transmission. And while it is a very smooth transmission, it doesn't feel like you really have to work hard to punch the clutch when you're driving through town and not driving it like a sports car. Look at the target demographic for cars like this. Young people who are interested in having a more affordable yet very sporty uh, vehicle, something like this hot hatch. A lot of them, a lot of millennials don't know how to drive stick. And that means for people who are shopping around for this car in an automatic, the Focus RS might be a total non-starter for them because you can only get it in a stick. But I think I might know just the guy to answer some of these questions. He's with Ford Performance. He's back at the race course, so let's head that way. So let, let's walk around it. Show me, show, yeah. me what you, show me what really stands out for you. Yeah, let's start at the front of the car. So first thing, under the hood, uh, our 2.3 liter four-cylinder uh, turbocharged engine, 350 horsepower, 350 foot-pounds. Uh, for any spirited driving, this is all the power you would need in this vehicle. Now to cool something like that, 350 horsepower, our front end, significant front end openings here uh, for our massive charge air cooler, and you'll notice the metal mesh. Uh, most of our performance products, our ST products for example, have a honeycomb plastic grill. Uh, we've had to use metal mesh here to ensure that we get maximum airflow. Uh, moving over here to our our, next to our fog lamps, again, we have our mesh, and these are for our uh, brake cooling right here. So we've increased the size of our brakes on this product, uh, so the customer should never experience any fade. Uh, our splitter uh, here, uh, along with some of the other aero treatments like the spoiler in the rear, the purpose of those is to ensure there's no lift at high speeds, right? So a customer will always feel planted to the ground when they're at 266 kilometers per hour. Now you've pulled this engine from the Mustang, right? Yeah, so this engine was derived from the uh, 2.3 liter in the Mustang. Uh, we've increased, it's a twin scroll turbo uh, to minimize lag. We've increased the compressor uh, and turbine wheels to get more air into it and then a massive charge air cooler to keep the thing cool. So those are the cool features on the front end. We move over to the wheels here. Well, we got a couple wheel options for our customers. Uh, this is our uh, entire options to go with it. Um, these are, uh, these are uh, uh, special tires we put on for today's snow tire event, but typically the vehicle would come with uh, Michelin Pilot uh, and Sport Cup 2 tires. 
The Sport Cup 2 tires are normally on a very expensive vehicle. Tremendous amount of uh, traction for our uh, uh, on-track usage. Uh, we have uh, four piston Brembo brakes, 350 millimeter disc brakes as well to go with these wheels. And what's interesting about the Canadian market is that Ford has opted to give both uh, summer and winter tires uh, on, on rims uh, standard, as uh, standard equipment. So you're getting two sets of tires with this car. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, we got back here, we got our, our, uh, our spoiler unique for the RS with our RS logo in it. Um, this helps keep the vehicle planted at really high speeds. Um, we want to look at the interior real quick? Yeah, let's take a look. I'm going to jump in the back. So here's something that's really interesting, um, which is that you've opted to make this car only available with a stick shift. Why was that? Yeah, th this is sticking to the heritage of the, our performance products, and we really thought it's still what our customer looks for in terms of a... Uh, um, a track vehicle is, is the manual control of the uh, transmission. Uh, so we really thought this is still where our customer base wanted to be, which is with the true manual transmission. I think a couple things I want to point out here is uh, right here where my finger is, is the uh, drive mode button. This will put the vehicle in, in four different modes. Uh, normal operation, a uh, sport mode, uh, a track mode, and then uh, the real cool feature, of course, is the drift mode. So um, normal, normal driving as a daily driver, normal mode's perfectly good for the vehicle. It'll give you a nice uh, soft ride with our, uh, our two-position uh, suspension. Uh, it'll quiet down the exhaust system a little bit, makes it very drivable. You still have full all-wheel drive uh, capability. Uh, as you notice, we came into the vehicle through four doors four-door family vehicle. While I'm up here in these Recaro racing seats here with great bolster support keeping me planted. Uh, but if you get into say track mode uh, on, a, uh, on a weekend, that will open up the vehicle for more wheel spin and yaw. And in drift mode, uh, uh, controlled uh, oversteer, which will really allow even a novice driver uh, to go uh, do figure eights in an empty parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's buying this thing? Yeah, certainly, uh, uh, a customer that's trying to do uh, multiple things, right? Uh, if you can, uh, if you're lucky enough to be able to f afford multiple cars in your garage, uh, there's some options there. Uh, if you want the performance and the ability to uh, to uh, uh, move the family around, uh, this this accomplishes many tasks. <laughs> well, well, the back seat's comfortable, but I want to get driving it too. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. All right. There you go. All right, so let's get practical here for a minute and talk about the back seat and the trunk space on this thing. I'm actually pretty impressed back here in terms of headroom at six foot two. I've still got some and legroom is okay as well. I've set the driver's seat to be a little bit further forward than I would set it just so that I could show you what it would be like for say a driver up front who's maybe five foot ten. It's not going to be great for rear facing car seats. You could put one in the, uh, in the passenger side here, but it would result in having a pretty unusable front seat but really the dimensions in the Focus RS are going to be exactly the same as the dimensions in the Focus and it is a car that a lot of families have been able to make a go of. And the same goes for the trunk and this is why I love hatchbacks because in a lot of ways they're like mini wagons. If I fold the seats flat in this thing I've got 60-40 split rear seats. You can fit a long item back here on a trip to Ikea. The family dog could fit in the trunk although there is one thing that's a bit of a challenge to that which is when you put the window down the back window is on a bit of an angle so the dog's not going to have a ton of headroom back there. Probably that's a smaller dog but a bigger dog might feel a bit of a squeeze. If this had a bit more of a flat back end to it certainly you'd have a bit more room for your gear and it would be a bit more sort of traditional wagon-esque. Well I had high expectations for the Focus RS. I came into this thing thinking that this car would be good but it even blew those expectations out of the water. For a dollar to fun ratio this thing's tough to beat and it's got a great all-wheel drive system. You can fit your family in the back yet when you want it to when you pop this thing into sport mode or drift mode holy cow on the track that was unbelievable this car comes alive and it kind of makes me feel like 
I want to hand in my motorcycle. I want to trade in the keys for that thing and get one of these because I can't wipe the smile off my face. And that is always an amazing indication of how good a car truly is. Next week on the program, we're in another more sport-inspired car that's the cheapest sedan in the Lexus lineups, the IS from that company. It's the rear-wheel drive version of that car too. We're going to be back in Calgary where it's pretty icy there right now as well. I'm going to be curious to see how that car stacks up, but for now, I'm going to see if there's any way I can pack the Focus RS. It is a small car, after all, into my carry-on luggage because I want to take this thing home. Have a great week. We'll see you in seven days.